at Nam Pong camp because I was present, I was managing uh, with Jerry. Uh, we were visited by a state, the first state department officer named Lionel Rosenblatt. And he went to Nam Pong uh, to meet with the senior leadership because General Wang Pao was in Bangkok. And he took the book that Dr. Yang Dao uh, which was called We the Moon, which was written in French. And he was requested by most of the leadership that they no longer want to be called Mio. All the programs since 1961 till the 1975, the only known Hmong were not known. Nobody knew Hmong in Washington, D.C up to the end of May 1975. Because all the programs under the CIA, the State Department, and everything else was labeled Mio. Mio Army, Mio Guerrillas. I know this very well because in Thailand also we didn't know more. You have to understand that. And with the book of Dr. Yang Dao, Lionel came back to Udon and we had a meeting that night. And Lionel shot the first cable to Miss Julia Taft, who was the Assistant Secretary of State, that he had encountered uh, the, about a, almost 2,000 refugees, male refugees. And in the bracket, he put Hmong, H-M-O-N-G, because that cable was written in front of me and Jerry. Three of us sat there, and that's Rhino, a very nice Jewish gentleman, he said, this is what we're gonna do. So he put, he found the Mio, M-E-O, and he put the bracket, Hmong. The next morning, he sent another message reporting that there is a need to fill the quota of only maybe 1,500 or 2,000. Uh, that was given the night before of Lao refugees with Hmong, H-O-M-O-N-G, in the bracket, Miao. And that was the beginning of your Hmong name in the refugee program. And during the time, the, in May, in June, and July, uh, there was many, many uh, activity that we had to do. That time, by the by, June 1975, a lot of people start knowing Moon than Mel, but there was still no quota. There was a daily fight uh, between uh, officer that's working at the consulate at that time where the State Department consulate officer will strike out the moon. And uh, in the night, we will have to replace the rejected envelope with a new envelope, let's say approved, to be sent to Bangkok. This has been a ritual for many, many weeks until in August 1975, Jerry, I, and Lionel called in from Washington, D.C. And we, that time, also Yang Lu was present. And we decided to send our best people to the United States to explain to everybody who the Hmong were. And also fight for the quarter that is not only connected to Lao under the help of some of our senior colleagues in the CIA. So everybody point the finger to Yang Si, of course, because he was our best man. Everybody respect Yang Si for his calmness and also that he was very well, well supported by a very bright young bride, wife by that time with a son named Asahi that I will never remember. I will never, I, because I never know a, a Hmong family who named his son under the Japanese beer. beer brand. And uh, 
So that is why uh, later in um, October we received the uh, visa that was sponsored, Yangtze was sponsored by Dr. Henry Kissinger. You know, he left in November and he has been working 1976, 77, a very critical time to get the numbers and we had a new category set up high risk people, the U.S. direct employee, etc., etc. So I have been involved in, in the first six months of the, the operation until um, I had to relocate to Bangkok. And lucky, and Yang Chi continued, and many of other, our other colleagues as well. But I would like to say something that in that is stuck in my mind about Yang Si personally. When we were the Sky team in Longshen, we had the privilege of using the the Sky Mess uh, because we worked directly with Jerry. So every night we would have beer and drinks, and even the guy with the pregnant wife, uh, Yang Lu, was still held up. But five o'clock. Yang Si drive his jeep home. He's the only one with a jeep also. The other one used a full jeep. Jerry gave him one jeep because he had to go home every night at five o'clock or else Pia would come in a motorcycle and get him. That was a very fond memory, but he was very punctual in departure. Today we should have been celebrating our joint birthdays because we were born in the, on the 5th of October today. And uh, so the last time we celebrated was in 1974, October. And we had to end the, part, the first part of the party at 5. And we continue on to about midnight. But Yaxi left at 5, the other birthday boys. So we remember him as a family man from then, which was very, very rare as a, as a Thai to see that in a Hmong community. Absolutely rare, you know, so therefore we respect that. And I think that this has uh, uh, been the reason why Lionel, who was working with Yang Si in Washington, D.C. in 1976, very intently, you know, because I came, I came in '76. I came to see uh, Lionel also in Washington D.C. and 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 Jerry was here also at that time, and we were lobbying very hard. And Jerry could not lobby very much because he was uh, on the other side of the government. Lionel did most of the lobby with Yang Si as the the main peer to to help. And the rest, I believe, is history where the refugees program are concerned. But for us, our friendship lasted forever. All my friends here have very strong bond of comradeship. And so today we pay our respect to Yang Si and I would like to confirm to Pia that all of us will never leave you. You always can depend on us. Yang Si departs to join Jerry. You make an early departure. We will be here for you always. And happy birthday, Yang Xi. Thank you very much. Bonjour,